I'm uh, Robert Evans. This is Behind the Bastards. <laughs> you sure you are you sure you're Robert Evans? You didn't sound so sure. <laughs> you know, Sophie, the nature of identity is so complicated. Who can who, say who anyone is? I'm yeah, so, I'm is Sophie us? Lichterman. Who is us? Positive. Who is us? Who is us? This is my new podcast, Who is Us with Robert Evans, <laughs> presumably. And um, definitely no. Sophie Lichterman. Definitely. Definitely so- Sophie Lichterman. This is a, a show about bad people. It's called Behind the Bastards. Hell yeah. Uh, and to talk about bad people with me is one of the better people I know, David Christopher Bell. Oh, jeez. Thanks. Full legal Hi. name. <laughs> Full now, legal Dave, name. <laughs> yeah. Just in case anybody's confused. worked together for many a year. We lived together for a, a year. We did. Um, our cats were once as friends. Um, Aww. Our cats. Allied together against another cat might be a better way of putting it. Yes, and me. Like, whenever yeah, our cat you. sat, your cat would have want to have nothing to do with me and loved my cat. And yeah. you know what? Honestly, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather it be that. Uh, yeah. Cat allies. Cat, li- cat, cat lies. Mm-hmm. Dave. How do you feel about libertarians? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people know that you don't tell the guests anything, right? They sh- I, that The show would not work if we told yeah, the guests, guests anything. Yeah, guests come in cold, intentionally. Sometimes they know the broad subject, but I don't even like that. But, That's not my preference. But that bit is so good, it'll never get old. What do you mm-hmm. think about, insert anus <laughs> thing here? Yeah, um, libertarians. My thoughts are like anything, the mm-hmm. most vocal people representing it are yes. incredibly irritating. Yes. But it's, I suspect there's a lot of very good ones who keep to themselves. Yeah. I, I I was a libertarian for many years. I still think there's a lot of good stuff in uh, I, in some of the things libertarians say. I think you know? John Carpenter might be one, but he that might not even know that. That makes sense for John Carpenter. Um, yeah. Today we are talking about the most vocal ones, and, and specifically the most kind of unhinged vocal ones. We are, uh, today, Dave, or, well, this week, really, I'm going to give you the long history of libertarians taking to the sea to try and establish floating nations. Oh my God. Are we going to be, t- I don't want to spoil, are we going to be talking about uh, Sealand? Oh, you bet. A little bit. A little bit about Sealand. Yeah. We're, we're talking about a, 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 the whole history of it, because, spoiler, every story ends the same way. <laughs> Just, a bunch of people lose money, and there's no libertarian floating nation. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like when step one is take to the sea, it does not end well, generally speaking. I mean, I've known sailors, and no, it doesn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so... Hmm. Oh, sorry. I I just I have a blanket view of the ocean. I don't think it wants us in there. And it doesn't I don't want think us we should in there. Be in it. We're not. We we don't belong there. And if I mean, you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk about why people do this. And yes, for the folks who want to, there's always people who want to be like pedantic about like I don't know if this one's really a bastard or like we'll do like two episodes on like we recently did two episodes on like industrial level child molesters and then Mm. we did an episode on a guy who was like an early fitness influencer and just like kind of shitty about eating disorders and people are like well they're not really like this doesn't really make yeah they're not all gonna be guys who raped five thousand kids you know what kind of show that would be a bad show people would not want to listen every week so absolutely we're going to talk about libertarians taking to the sea to build their own (laughs) nations and yeah most of them are shitty people so it's fine they belong here okay speaking of which we're going to start by talking about Peter Thiel. So <laughs> Peter Thiel, PayPal co-founder, um, monarcho libertarian, uh, quasi fascist influencer, um, on a grand cash scale. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, just, just man about town. Peter Thiel, uh, is his bank. Yeah. He's running for president or he's running for Senator under the name JD Vance. I believe yeah, he is currently yeah. running for Senator under the name JD Vance, dark money, Kingpin, Peter Thiel. Mm-hmm. Um, has been on a couple of occasions has shotgun money out towards bankrolling an exploratory round of seasteading experiments um, in libertarian utopian living seaste- seasteads in general that refers to self-sustaining colonies of like floating um, 
homes, basically. So sometimes it could be a boat. It could be like a little island of these weird little hexagonal like housing units that float. There's a bunch of different designs around there. Um, everybody's kind of arguing about what the best version of this is. But a lot of libertarians think seasteading is the future. And Peter Thiel has put a not... It's not significant to him, but significant amount of money to normal people into backing uh, different seasteading projects. And the basic idea um, is that with a seastead, you'll be in the ocean, so you won't have to you won't have to um, uh, abide by any nation's law. So all of these different things, ideas libertarians have about taxes and and gun laws and age of consent laws um, oh, mainly age of consent laws um, won't won't apply they can you can you can try to you can really it could be i think there's an idea that like well if you get enough people out in the sea living living the way we think people should live everyone else will see that it works and then our ideas right. will take over right there's a number of different ways that get sold to people and um yeah it's it's, it's water pretty, world rules yeah, it's water world rules. Um, one sec. I have the wrong document open, I just realized. That's fine. You want me to just uh, talk about water world for a little bit? Yeah, talk about water world for a second, Dave. I mean, I, I imagine it's water world rules down to like, yeah, Kevin Costner being like a shitty dude who like, at one point, I think he's going to barter the woman and child that he's with. He sure does. That is a moment in that movie. Yeah. yeah that movie's terrible. Okay. So... You may have heard, Dave, that in September of this year, The Guardian published an article about the doomed voyage of the Satoshi, which was a cruise ship a bunch of libertarian crypto nerds had bought and tried to turn into a floating city. Did you catch this story? I vaguely caught it. I think that's one yeah. of those headlines that I was just like, not today. Yeah, uh, not today. I don't today. have time for this one. It's it's very funny. Uh, it's 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 a pretty hilarious failure. We'll talk about it in detail later. But like when this when it went viral that like libertarians were trying to like create their own independent nation on a boat uh in the middle of the ocean a bunch of people started bringing up bioshock have you played bioshock uh, uh, weirdly enough i've played bioshock infinite okay uh, i do i do remember i played a little of the first one and i i yeah. do recall that he is making an ocean city in that yeah yeah it's a libertarian i haven't played the game either but i'm familiar as an internet person with the basics which is that it's like a libertarian underwater city that goes disastrously long and everybody murders each other right yeah um yeah that's the basic idea um so i think most people are at least broadly aware of it um and yeah it's uh it's 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 funny that people would compare libertarians buying a boat calling naming it after the founder of bitcoin and then like trying to create a nation with it to rapture because the reality of the situation is that like rapture in bioshock which is that libertarian city was itself like inspired by about like 60 years of libertarians trying to make cities and boats um in various parts of the open ocean like right. it, yeah like it, 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 it's, it's a not satire that, like it yeah, was it, made as a satire it was made and as a satire yeah so you you wouldn't want to like watch the satire and be like hey that's a good idea i should model it after that yeah uh, it's, it's it, <laughs> missing the point yeah it's missing the point but it's also funny to me that people are like oh, this is how ridiculous some of these people are that they like inadvertently did the thing that happened in this video game and was like clearly a bad idea. Um, and the reality is that the video game was just kind of making fun of the fact that they keep trying to do this. This is like, this is, this is like two of our lifetimes of a, a certain kind of libertarian trying to make a boat nation. And it never works, um, but it's always very funny. So the history of this, 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 this longstanding standing to, like drive more than half a century old to like create a habitat in the ocean that libertarians can try their ideas out in that goes back to the golden age of science fiction specifically it goes back to a guy named robert heinlein um heinlein most famously wrote starship troopers um he's also one of the founding fathers of modern libertarian politics he like helped create american style libertarianism um he was a fascinating guy he was kind of like gene roddenberry in that like a number of his his science fiction books at the time were like ahead of the curve on things like racial justice and not in a way that is particularly impressive today, but he had like a habit of like, he'd make his protagonists not white dudes, um, but not make it a big deal. It was just like, you know, this, this, this guy's Hispanic and that's just a thing that's going on, right. which was not super common at the time. Um, Progressive for its time, basically. For its time. There's also some racist as hell stuff in some Heinlein oh, books, yeah. but yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I'm I'm not trying. I'm just trying to give you an, an idea of like why this guy is is uh, stuck out to people. Um, he played around with a lot of libertarian ideas and a lot of really authoritarian ideas. He was a weird because like Starship Troopers is like a fascist book. Like it's it's it, extremely fascist. Um, right. If I recall, <laughs> um, Verhoeven, his interpretation is not what the book intended. It's not a, at it's all. It's making fun of the book. It's a it's mm. and now I know there's talk of making like a another adaptation without that satire. Yeah. And it's like we're I, I think they're going the wrong way with that. Yeah. The def, cause, yeah. Because Verhoeven like heard people describe Starship Troopers, which is the military runs the state, which exists entirely to like service its ability to continue to do violence against these aliens that as far as we know, had no role in provoking like a fight with humanity. Um, and Heinlein or, or uh, Verhoeven heard that and was just like, well, that sounds fascist as hell. I'll guess I'll just make a fascist movie. Um, right. And no one knew I saw, I saw, I didn't screening. get it at the time. Yeah, yeah. I saw a screening of starship troopers where Verhoeven did a Q and a afterwards. Yeah. And he talked about his exasperation where he's like, I literally dressed them like Nazis. Yeah. And I like, don't know how I could have been studio, clear. Yeah. Like no one, no one realized it. Yeah. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah, and it's uh, some of what happens with Robert Heinlein is also incredible um, because so in addition to some fascist stuff, Heinlein plays around with a lot of libertarian ideas, which is a big part of why he's remembered today. His book in particular, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, is like a lot of people would consider it a foundational text for like the American libertarian movement. It's a, it's a very influential book. Um, and to kind of describe what happens in the book, I'm going to read a write up of it from The Baffler. Heinlein's own apparent anti-government ethos is channeled through the elderly Peruvian-born professor Prof. Bernardo de La Paz. Prof. is one of uh, among hundreds of outcasts, outlaws, and outsiders inhabiting underground colonies on the moon, or as it's known in the late 21st century, Luna. Prof.'s cheap comrades in arms are an Amazonian blonde rabble-rouser, Wyoming knot, and a one-armed computer technician, the narrator hero Manuel Garcia O'Kelly Davis. The ragtag trio spearheads a revolutionary movement to make this ramshackle outpost for the marginalized into a self-governing nation free of the repressive rule of earth so there's like you see why like this this is attractive to people right there's this idea yeah. there, there's a lot of like libertarian politics in it there's also weird stuff like there, it's a mix of congress is dumb and like governments can't get anything done and also monarchy would be cool oh, um no. yeah i mean i get the uh, like Every year when I pay taxes, I become yeah. a libertarian for a second. Like, I get it. <laughs> I understand the government's extremely frustrating, and there's something very appealing mm -hmm. about going off and starting your own thing. I absolutely get it. Yeah, it's like uh, in the DMV, everybody is a libertarian. Or an yeah, anarchist. exactly. Like, you're just ready to burn it all down. Yeah. Um, but no, and what what's interesting there to me is kind of like with Starship Troopers, people take like a weirdly... Like the 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 moon is the harsh mistress is about like people who are part of who are living in a colony that's being oppressed by a government rebelling in order to become independent and seasteading, which is heavily influenced by this book, is about sailing to the ocean to just hide from the government and and mine Bitcoin. So mm. I think there's a difference. I, I don't think I don't think they're necessarily reading Heinlein right. That said, Robert Heinlein probably would be into seasteading. So perhaps I'm the one that's wrong here. Sure. Um, it also seems like. Uh, never a good policy to like start your belief structure from a fictional book or a work yeah. of fiction because yeah. it's it's not the writer isn't intending it to be something that you're you you take like an instruction manual i assume yep. uh so it just seems like a recipe for disaster in general yeah i mean i'm sure like heinlein was playing with ideas that were interesting to him and that some of which he thought should be instituted like that's pretty common and in fiction with a political edge, but I don't think, I don't think he was um, seeing it as being as influential as it was in the way that it was. I think he'd be bummed that it's mostly been used for people to steal money from other people in order to <laughs> not build boats. I think he would be un unhappy with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, I think that's fair. Um, so yeah, you can see 
the influence of the Munisha Harsh mistress and, and of Heinlein in general and like Elon Musk's plans to colonize Mars, the crypto mm. weirdos making an, an NFT cartoon about apes flying to another planet to set up a colony, like all of this. It, it, it's a common theme in in libertarian kind of angled fiction ever since. Um, now, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress was published in 1966. And in 1971, a millionaire developer from Las Vegas, a guy named Michael Oliver, attempted to create his own libertarian utopia. So I don't know. We know Michael Oliver was was definitely a Heinlein fan. Uh, I don't know which, which book in particular spurred him on, but I kind of think it's The Moon is the Harsh Mistress. Um, so five years after that gets published, this guy, Michael Oliver, decides he's going to make his own independent libertarian state. And since there was no room on land, he decided to take to the sea. He established what he called the Republic of Minerva on a partially submerged reef near Tonga. It was called the Republic of Minerva because a boat called the Minerva had sunk there. Um, All right. Which That's is good, a good, good start. <laughs> yeah, naming it after the last failure that yeah. happened around there. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a little bit uh, of a weird call. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of land here. Uh, it's mostly just like barely, reef that's barely above the water line mm. and sometimes under it, like depending on kind of where the tide is. Um, it's only land in the technical sense of the word. But Oliver decides like, <laughs> I'm going to take this since it's in the, it's in the, it's up for grabs, right? Anyone can own it if nobody no owns it. Right. No, no one's going to stop them there. They're like, yeah. yeah, sure. Go ahead. That is what he thinks. He gets together two other co-founders who put in funding alongside him. Um, and he, he announces through like magazines and stuff that he's creating a republic. Uh, he said in these ads that he wanted to make, quote, an escape from high taxes, riots, drugs, and crime. Um, Which magazines? <laughs> Do like we know? libertarian magazines. Okay. Yeah, we've got the name of one of them in here. Okay. Um, it is fun because this is right after like um, the 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 Holy Week uprisings after Martin Luther King's murder and and all of the different kind of protests and riots in the wake of that. So there's there's kind of a little bit of a of a white supremacy angle here where it's like uh, the, all the cities are so fucked up because of all the bad things we did to black people. Time to right. take to the ocean. Yeah. I gotta evergreen, escape this evergreen statement that there's always yeah. a little bit of white supremacy mm -hmm. <laughs> in these things. Yes, yeah, subsidies yeah. go in there too. Like, mm -hmm. okay, um, yeah, I want to quote from the website Curbed here about Michael's plans. They intended to build a 400 acre artificial island over the reef and turn it into a resort that would sparkle like a jewel in the blue South Pacific, according to one of the Republic of Minerva's self-published newspapers. They hope to attract tens of thousands of residents and base their governance structure on zero taxes, no welfare, no subsidies, and no economic intervention. A coin collector and a real estate investor, Oliver used much of his own wealth to establish the Republic of Minerva. Soon after sending a declaration of independence, another founder, Morris Davis, built a tower of stones on the reef and planted a flag, a golden torch set against a blue background for the new country on it. Mm. So they got a flag now. They got a little stone tower and a flag. That's step one. You get, your, step you get one. your flag there, then you're good to go. <laughs> I do just love that this guy with his experience speculating in real estate and collecting coins is like, I can make a country. Right. <laughs> I, I could be the founding father or something. I got it this. It seems easy yeah. enough. It seems I like mean, those founding fathers, they weren't anything. Until I mean, they yeah, were. I mean, honestly, you look at like George Washington and it's uh, like it, it is just kind of some jackass being like, yeah, I yeah. think I could make this work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just a bunch of dudes who hung out mm -hmm. like at a bar. Uh, yeah, it is funny, but you are rules. right. Every country was just founded by a bunch of dudes at a bar. <laughs> right. It's uh, for me, it's with the libertarian stuff. It just always seems like. They're going to accidentally invent government every time, right? Like Funny you should say that, goes. Dave, because that happens yeah. in every one of these stories. <laughs> yeah, so. because they're like, how do we pay for things? I don't know. Maybe everybody gives a little bit of money. Like they mm -hmm. start slowly stumbling on the it's, same conclusions. It, it's the same thing that's happened with cryptocurrency is like because all these people get all of their money stolen constantly because right. there's no protections or safeguards. And then there's no recourse if all of your money gets stolen. And so people have like created things like Coinbase and, and crypto dot com that are places where you store your money and you have a guarantee <laughs> it'll be protected it's like when Lyft all things was like, like we're getting out of the bank system right it okay. was like lyft was like we're creating shuttles that go from point a to b and everybody pays a little bit and it's like do you mean a bus mm -hmm. are you talking about a bus yeah but more expensive yeah <laughs> that's the 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 genius innovations of liber it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, just once, I would like to see some libertarians innovate in their community, but I don't know. 
uh, filling in potholes um, or altering the speed limits on on an interstate that has speed traps. Um, go go do something. You don't have to. Don't, don't just go. Don't don't try to make another boat city. It's not going to work anyway. Yeah. Whatever. So the founders of the Republic of Minerva, after they they get their flag up and everything, hire an Australian boat to fill the reefs up with up with sand. And their plan is just to dump sand on these shallow reefs until there's land. Right. That's the idea. Right. That's um, certainly how I do it. But yeah, I'm not, that makes sense. You know. Yeah. They wanted to get it to about eight feet above sea level, um, and they figured that if they could create 15 acres of actual land, that would be enough to convince investors that they were legitimate and thus get enough money to raise up to 2,500 acres. So like, we're going to make 15 acres, and we'll use that as our proof of concept. And then once people realize how much money is being made in having a barren island of free enterprise... <laughs> <laughs> with no resources other than sand, um, oh, they'll come no. crawl. Uh, they'll cut. The money will pour in. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. There's no taxes. Is there fresh water? Well, no. Can you can you grow food? <laughs> Not really. Is there shopping? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's no just taxes. Land. Yeah, yeah. Look at all this land we got. Mm -hmm. We can play like volleyball and stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Tax free, baby. Yeah. Um, that said, like, there's ways it might have worked, especially if it actually had, if they'd got somehow gotten you in recognition and if rich people could just claim to live there and not pay taxes. Like, I could see how this could be a money making scheme. And it might have been a money make sch making scheme that worked, if not for one thing the existence of other countries. Oh, no, no. That was the one those, thing they didn't take into account. Those... So. Damn other countries. These 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 barren shoals that they're trying to pile sand onto are a little, uh, you know, I think just a couple of miles off the coast of Tonga, which is an island in the South Pacific, an island that has a government, Dave, and a military. Right. <laughs> and Tonga sees these foreigners creating what like a, 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 looks like they're trying to create a new country right outside <laughs> of Tonga on land that uh, on land that like their naval vessels patrol and is like well we're not really okay with this it's like uh, I'm imagining like looking through binoculars like uh, yeah. I better call somebody about uh, this you gotta do something about this huh if you don't if you don't get rid of libertarians if you don't get rid of them quickly you're just yeah. gonna have a nest of the bastards ah <laughs> oh, darn we got libertarians <laughs> <laughs> Wait, social or free market? Nah, free market. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> get the brooms out. Let's yeah, shoot them the away. Spray. <laughs> yeah. Libertarian spray. Uh, are they at least mutualists? No. God damn it. Yeah. Um so the the head of state of Tonga sent them a letter basically being like, We're not gonna let you set up an empire on our doorstep. That's that's not okay. So yeah. the first thing Tonga does is they start airdropping just random boxes of aid supplies onto the the reef in order to establish ownership, right? Like if our government provides a service to this barren reef, then clearly it's part of our territory. <laughs> that's also like a really good way to insult libertarians, mm -hmm. I feel like. It's mm -hmm. like, here, have some help. And mm -hmm. they're like, We don't want help, goddammit. Like also, that's of them what a there. flex oh okay no nobody's there at the time maybe some so crabs they, maybe look, some crabs got some free food out of this yeah this is absurd on the side of tonga too because they're literally just being like well okay let's drop random supplies on this island with a population of zero then it's ours suddenly like right again like cryptocurrency does kind of accurately get across to people like yeah money is nonsense like it's all right. it's all it's all a fucking con game we're all larping yeah at, so at so are time, actual yeah. governments to be yeah. fair like you see it in this where they're like oh they're saying that's theirs well we never cared about this piece of nothing before but now let's drop some random crap on it so it's ours <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny um so uh, th this did not succeed in dissuading the libertarians. They still continued mm. to claim that they were a republic. And so in June of 1971, the king of Tonga used his military to officially seize the land, which again, had nobody on it. The dream of the Republic of Minerva died. But the grift did not die, because grifts are eternal. Michael mm. Oliver started minting coins for his country after it was taken back by the Tongan government in order to raise funds to... I guess reconquer it. It was kind of unclear what the money was for. <laughs> like, I was gonna say, so are you going like to invade Tonga? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. What is step two here, buddy? It, you know what that feels like to me is that he had a really good idea for coins, mm -hmm. and 
then they threw this in front of him and he wasn't going to change his plan. Yeah, he wasn't so going to stop was making like, coins. Yeah, hey. I had I have cool designs for coins. I'm going to do them no matter what. He had uh, he had gold coins for $75 and silver coins for $35. Um and I should note now that these are Minerva dollars, 75 Minerva dollars um and 35 <laughs> Minerva dollars, so I don't know the actual value. I'm not certain of the exchange rate. Right. This is um, like when uh, Usher was it Usher who was handing out his own Usher bucks? At, yes. Uh, yeah, that sounds like Usher. These are Usher bucks. So he advertised these these Minerva dollars um, as late as 1975 in austere publications like the Libertarian Review. So mm. the Tongan government takes them out in 71 and 75. He's ta- selling Minerva dollars under the tagline, the world's most unusual new country, inspiration for the most unique metal coin ever minted. Hmm. Yeah. It is unusual so, to have yeah, a country he... with no people that gets immediately <laughs> conquered. That That guess... is not common. Yeah, I'm not sure how else you'd sell it by being yeah. like, this is fucking weird, right? Yeah. You want a piece of this? Yeah. We made some calls, didn't we? Yeah. That said, if anyone can find any Republic of Minerva coinage, um, I would love that. Uh, yeah. I, they come up online for sale sometimes, but I haven't found any recently. I feel like, ironically, they're now worth a lot because... It's probably like just... a problem, of, like how expensive they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're probably just a collector's item. Yeah. Um collectors for fans of horribly failed grifts yeah i'd be lying if i said i wouldn't get one just for fun to have it like (laughs) on on my shelf or something and have a little story there yeah i I have a friend who got very excited to buy an enron mug you know it's just yeah some of the some things are exciting yep um yeah so uh moving on from there um i i I should make a note because we're starting with the republic of minerva which i think is the first example of the thing we're talking about today but there is one other thing that kind of happened around the same time that and before you get to that it is time it's time for you know are are you interrupting me to make us go to ad sophie just for capitalism's sake just for Mm. capitalism's sake and so that we can stay in our houses yes i i do love staying in my house all right oh i do love a good house um i love a bad house just a big fan of houses Mm -hmm. um house music oh so good oh perfect house mm-hmm. md the tv show oh also yeah good. yeah great 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 uh great vehicle for um hugh Laurie. hugh lori that's his name yeah. i'm not seeing him in a minute yeah what so happened right. him? you know there's an episode with jeremy renner in house oh no i'd oh. forgotten goodness yeah. i remember this it's all coming back to me oh, yeah god what a tragedy mm. um so we're going to talk now about the Republic of Sealand, which is kind of, it, it, it happened right around the same time as the Republic of Minerva. Um, I kind of think Republic of Minerva is more, the Republic of Sealand isn't quite a libertarian thing. It's weird. Um, all right, we'll just talk about it. Yeah. I've always Se- wanted to go to Sealand. I actually, I would a long love time yeah. ago, I wrote a screenplay with mm-hmm. Sealand in it, and I did a lot of research that I now completely forget. Oh, uh, well. I, it's a principality. It's a, isn't it a principality? It is a principality. The principality of Sealand was established on an old Royal Navy platform uh, that was built during World War II to like protect shipping. So it's it's not uh, uh, not even shoals. It's just like this big metal looks a little bit like a tiny oil derrick kind of situation built in in the ocean in order to uh, uh, put guns on it to shoot things. And after the war, the British take the guns away, and it's just this platform. And you might think, well, didn't the British Navy own it? No, because they illegally built uh, built it in in, in foreign a foreign country's waters or in international waters. Sorry, it, it, and you can't you're not allowed to weaponize international waters. So the Royal Navy builds this this platform, and they're like, uh, and then the war ends, and the other countries are like, you know, it's an international crime for you to have that. And since you built it to fight Nazis, nobody's going to say anything, but you should probably bounce. So the Royal Navy leaves this platform, um, and in 1965 um in, in, in the uk has all these really harsh laws about what can be played on the radio and not so in the 60s and 70s there's a bunch of pirate radio stations that will like take to the sea and illegally broadcast music that can't be played normally in the uk 
and See, one of that's these cool that that's fucking rad that's as hell just like pump up the volume this, man this story like is, yeah the principality of sealand there's some rad shit here because it first gets inhabited when a pirate radio crew in 1965 occupies the platform um and it looks like a couple of them get in there and in september of 1967 a british citizen and radio pirate named roy bates occupies it and while he's broadcasting illegal music from it declares it an independent principality um there's a whole fun story here mercenaries get involved at one point there's like a civil war in sealand basically yep. and a government in exile uh, um, a lot of a lot of wild shit happens in Sealand. Um, it's not really a libertarian. It's not a super political thing. Like from what I yeah. recall, they do like online gambling now. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I, it's it's more of like it's more of what I can get behind, which is like yeah. look at this thing that's just out there that no one owns. Yeah, let's break up the place and like do stuff. There's not a pretension that they're like experimenting with a new frontier in civilization. They're like, hey, if we take over this thing in the middle of the ocean that no one owns, we can broadcast songs without paying and gamble, <laughs> which right. I, I, like, I am entirely supportive of. Yeah, yeah, I feel like if a bunch of libertarians showed up, they'd be like, yeah. no, we're full. Like, yeah. I don't think they want to build anything. Yeah, they're we're like, not in this for got, your revolution, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we got here before you. Too bad. Leave, yeah. you know? And Roy dies. His, I think his kids are now running everything. Like, it's basically like a gimmick branding opportunity for the family. I'd call it, it's, there's a roadside attraction vibe to it, even though obviously yeah. getting there is a nightmare. Um, so, yeah, you've got Sealand, you've got the Republic of Minerva, late 60s, early 70s. But for obvious reasons, the libertarian dream of taking to the sea to avoid regulation, it was clearly present that early, but it had to wait until the Internet age to really take off. You know, people try this back in the day, but it just it's really hard to build mm -hmm. a libertarian boat city without modern technological resources. I should say it's hard to grift people into crowdfunding a libertarian boat city that never gets yeah. built. It's that idea Without that there's resources. like, right, there's like, there's probably like a couple thousand people who will buy your grift. The yeah. problem is they're spread out throughout yeah. the world. They're, there's not the, many in each town. Right. And the internet has made it, you know, instead of being the person going town to town selling tonics and whatnot, yeah. you can just like blast it out on Twitter and then they, they all come to you. Yeah. Otherwise you'd have to go person to person and ask like, hey, has anything bad ever happened to you? And then mm -hmm. if they say no, say, I got a deal for you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like a trusting little lamb. <laughs> so in 1995, a guy named Howard Turney was, he claims, and he's a liar. So can you take that with a bit? Okay, he's, he's, good to know. He says that for years before 95, he'd had a dream of like following in the footsteps of the Republic of Minerva, but, but getting it right and creating like an independent nation or an independent community in the ocean that could abide by libertarian principles. And in 1995, he's hanging out in the Caribbean Sea and he finds an, a nice stretch of unusually shallow water that's in international waters. So it's underwater, but it's shallow. So with enough sand, you could actually like build an island out there. It's kind of his idea mm -hmm. um so he says he finds this in 1997 and he decides to raise up new land and establish a utopia now right around this same time i'm not sure if the desire to fund uh the creation of a new island utopia came first or if this came first but he changes his name to lazarus long um, oh my god yeah that is that is a porn star name and yeah i was about um, to say and he's not doing porn Come on, no, man. no. He changes it to Lazarus Long because Lazarus Long, in addition to being obviously a porn name, is an homage to a Robert Heinlein book. Uh. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote from an article independent uh, from the, in the Independent explaining uh, Howard Turney's uh, thinking here. He decided there were too many Howard Turneys around. And anyway, as he puts it, Prince Lazarus has a ring to it. He took his new name from a character in Time Enough for Love, a novel by the American science fiction author, author Robert Heinlein. I admired his philosophy. It was so close to my own philosophy, as he says of his fictional antecedent. The Lazarus Long of Heinlein's epic saga is centuries old and lives in a world where aging is a thing of the past. His philosophy amounts to a series of pro-individualistic slogans that can fairly easy, easily be said to represent the thinking of the man who created them. Heinlein coined the phrase, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, and among his other catchy aphorisms are, all men are created unequal, taxes are not levied for the benefit of the taxed, and beware of altruism, it is based on self-deception, the root of all evil. Huh. Yeah. So, okay, so going back to, so Lazarus Long, Long. you mentioned there about people like living forever, and it, like that's what 
That's what's yeah, going on, right? The Lazarus, like that was a that's a reference to like Jesus resurrecting people. Yeah, for sure. And then long as in long. <laughs> Yeah, like he was a long, look, just a law, you know, like long Dave, life. He just wanted to make sure he had that double. In, like, in the golden age of science fiction, <laughs> subtlety had not yet been invented. <laughs> we, we hadn't we hadn't cracked the nut on being subtle. So yeah, every character. I mean, let's be fair. The We're founding the founding fiction piece for a cyberpunk, the the most influential piece of science fiction in in decades was hero protagonist. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, two yeah. of the biggest. Sci-fi things is Star Wars yep, and Star it, Trek. Yeah, it, the one both of which leave very little space. to the imagination. Yeah, and the yeah. one where they explore in space. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. We're not good at that. But like what? at the same time it sells, it works. So Yeah, you don't need to be look, if the if the story's good, people will forgive a shitty title. Yeah. Um I don't know. I haven't read this Heinlein book. Maybe it was good. Mm-hmm. So before his name change, Howard had been a small town kid from Bowie, Arizona, who'd worked briefly as a cowboy before becoming an entrepreneur. He had definite narcissist vibes, telling an interviewer once, it took me a few years to realize that I had more intelligence than the average person and more imagination. <laughs> this is funny <laughs> because he speaks to all of the guys who try this and literally all of their experiments in creating new nations are the same and all in the same way. So I, I love the fact that he's like, yeah. I'm more imaginative than the average person i mean it's one of the biggest the red grip, flags buddy. yeah like if anybody's like i'm smarter and more imaginative than most people i'm like all right well, i'm gonna walk the other yeah. way now uh, we don't need to be having this conversation yeah yeah so howard was a successful businessman he made money in the restaurant industry and then started marketing products for grocery stores he farmed shrimp he repaired and sold generators he's just like makes a bunch of different businesses and then in july of 1990 when he's 59 he reads a report in the new england journal of medicine about hgh or human growth hormone Mm. Um, and the study showed that world war ii vets injected with hgh lost body fat and gained muscle mass so howard starts selling hgh like he's he's like selling steroids basically to people this is the thing that like joe rogan takes um and uh he he sells it for like 18 months before the pharmaceutical industry realizes there's profit to be made um and starts like selling them officially um so howard like gets builds a clinic in mexico um in order to sell hgh to bodybuilders excellent so the pharmaceutical company was like wait hold on there you can't do that make money off this people will buy this shit yeah yeah um Yeah, so he gets rich selling HGH as one of the first people selling HGH. Um, So it's exciting that, like, supplements have been with with us for a while in the libertarian space. (laughs) (laughs) So um, he Prince Lazarus, uh, again, that's how he's known when the story starts. I know, it's amazing. Pays $400,000 of his HGH money uh, into the New Utopia Project, as he calls it, which is his plan to build an island in the shallow part of the Caribbean. Uh, he estimates the total project will cost $216 million. So like literally every other dude in our story, and yeah, they're all dudes, he starts mm-hmm. trying to raise money to fund this. Um, he raises it through what's called the New Utopia Development Trust, which he registered in Belize because they don't make you pay taxes. Sure. Uh, when journalists would question whether or not this was all just a grift, he would assure them that neither he nor his governors were members of the trust, which he said was independent and would only give a small percentage of construction costs to members of the government which Mm. i'm sure was completely true i was gonna Um, say seems on the level totally seems on the level nothing weird here new utopia gets off the ground right around the same time as another very dumb project called oceania uh which was another floating libertarian city that started raising money to build itself in the early 1990s right around the kind of the same time as new utopia i haven't found much about oceania uh it never got off the ground as more than a website so i'm not going to talk about it in detail other than to reference how the prince you have to call him the prince responded when a libertarian writer asked him why oceania hadn't gone anywhere so basically these two start around the same time one of them fails a guy interviewing prince lazarus is like hey why do you think it failed and lazarus says the problem was that it was conceived by a bunch of radical militiamen everything was going to be legal you could carry an anti-tank gun down the street if you wanted and they were going to have dueling made lawful now who's going to invest their money in something like this where some drunk challenges you to a duel and kills you there's not much incentive there Mm. feels like he's circling the point Mm -hmm. like it's that thing of like yeah we can't make it free for everybody yeah all the time we there has to be like 
limits set and then it's the question of well by who yeah uh, and it's like well those people were clowns i'm the i'm extremely intelligent and creative yeah and it's i'm I'm not i'm not obviously My coming from, from the perspective of that like the only way to have a society is with like a top-down government but you 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 do have to think about it more than like everyone can just do everything and it's, it's well what yeah. do you do if someone starts killing people you have to have an answer to that question <laughs> like and right it says a lot that none of these none when these guys find themselves asked that question none of them propose anything new they just wind up recreating the government um as yeah. it exists so it's like well you don't actually have any ideas you just don't want to be told what to do but when you're angry at someone else you just do government shit again they want to be at the top it reminds yeah. me a lot of when people are like back in the day are like this forum is bullshit i'm going to create my own forum and then they end up doing all the same stuff yeah because it's just that they want to be in charge uh and that's that's how you make 4chan like it's just uh it's 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 just like you either if you do complete lawlessness it's very hard to maintain that right you have uh, to like you have to have an idea about what you want to replace the laws and if right. your only idea is i don't think i should have to pay taxes and and should be able to sleep with 12 year olds um then your society is not going to have you're not going to have anything ready other than well i guess i'll do what i just left when a problem right. happens it's yeah. it's it feels the same as starting a cult because yeah it, it, well it kind of is yeah. it is yeah because it's always like if i would be fine if someone was like look i just don't want to be bothered i'm yeah. gonna go into the woods and i'm gonna live off the land or in this case off the ocean and i won't bother you and you don't bother me the problem is that then it becomes this whole thing where yeah. they, they like want other people there and they think they think that they can make some sort of new government and it it it's like depressing to say it's like yeah it's all sort of we've we've thought it all up yeah that's and, the th- that's the thing if you if you're not coming to it with like here is if you're only saying i don't think these things should be present but you're not saying i think we should do this instead then you don't actually have an idea you're just angry because things that exist are imperfect um i think there's there's a if all if these guys are being like hey we're going to start a new society in the sea and here's how we're going to deal with violence and here's what what, how we're going to decide what's restricted and here's going to be the community accountability okay well maybe that'll work you guys clearly have an idea other than i don't want to pay taxes or have subsidies (laughs) yeah yeah if you're creating some sort of yeah, com- communal system where everybody. But yeah, this feels if you very just much have a plan, right? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. It feels very much the idea that they their ideas stop short of I want to be in power. Like, yeah. it, it's still it feels like a power grab. Yeah, um, I think it's yeah. The hope is I think well I think for most of them it's just like trying to make money. But yeah, I think for a lot of people it's the idea that like well i i'm i got in too late to wind up ahead in where i came from but if i create a new place out of the sea then i can be the king there or right. literally the prince and again i feel like we've all had that instinct sure. uh to take to the sea or to go in the woods and be like you know what uh, I'll, i'm gonna stop all of this i'm just but then once you if you get into that scenario then it's like oh no <laughs> how do i actually survive yeah. doing this? i mean when i bought 1300 acres in idaho and then cut off all of the power and internet access to that small town um Mm -hmm. i thought it was going to be simple uh but it turns out people need all sorts of things you don't it sounds simple yeah it does sound simple um but my god for one thing dave i don't know if you know how expensive it is but digging six foot holes uh the size of a human body real mm-hmm. problem anyway and um, if you get other pe- people are real whiners about that stuff oh, they too. hate digging corpse holes yeah um and they you get pissed just because you blocked food from any what would it's a it's a real problem but the yeah. point is i thought about it more than these guys did um because mm-hmm. i didn't have to already make land because there's lots of idaho uh, right yeah so and who gives a shit about that land yeah you can go out there and just do whatever <laughs> mm-hmm. for a while and then <laughs> for a then, while and then you know the it's authorities get so involved far, yeah. okay good that's well, good to know yeah there 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 are some laws knocking um, on the door so yeah the, the, but what we just talked about is like this thing you notice a bunch is that like they don't 
they always default to doing things the way they're done in the world they left when a problem occurs. And they don't have the only ideas like political theory ideas that they seem to want to institute are like not paying taxes. Um, and in fact, Prince Lazarus was one of the most blatant about this. He bragged that New Utopia would, quote, out Cayman the Caymans as a place to hide wealth. So he was <laughs> very open about this is just for rich people as to use as a tax shelter. Um Citizens of New Utopia would pay no taxes, just a $1,500 five-year bond that both buys you citizenship and promise to pay 9.5% annual interest to the bearer. So you're an investor if you're a citizen. Um, mm. So that's good. No way that could wind up with a situation that becomes slavery, like if people who <laughs> come there and don't have the bonds have to pay in labor. I don't know. A number of ways I could see that going. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. In interviews, the prince compared this positively to the $55,000 a person had to pay in order to become a citizen of Belize for tax purposes, which is a thing you only know when you've become the citizen of another nation for tax purposes. <laughs> Lazarus's goal was to get 4,000 citizens to fund startup costs, and by t the time The Independent interviewed him in 1997, he had almost 500 backers. So, you know, that's half a million dollars, more than half a million dollars. Yeah, it's not bad. Six, seven hundred thousand. So if he actually did invest four hundred thousand, he's got a good rate of return already. That was the year Prince Lazarus began agitating for UN membership for his country, which oh, again had too no far, people. Man. Or yeah, like, yeah, he's he's trying. Um, <laughs> oh he, he my goodness, <laughs> dude! <he> like. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just have, have some land first and like, yeah, that's, like that is literally what the UN says. Yeah. The <laughs> UN is like, like we would on. consider your membership if there was land with people on it, which yeah. is our, our requirement for a country. That's fair. I think that's more than fair from yeah, the UN. I, yeah, I, I think so. Cause otherwise you're not gonna be able to get anything done as the UN. People are going to be trying to make everything into a country. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd be doing it left and right. And I would say land with people on it is a pretty good line. If you're like def minimum characteristics of a nation, yeah. land with people on it. We'll start, we'll start there and then yeah. we'll ask some more questions and see. Yeah, like, I think that, there's is, more you can do. Yeah. Is it your land? <laughs> is it, is it owned land? by another government? Do the people know you're making them into a country? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are the people aware? Any um, atrocities you're planning yeah. on committing? Yeah. <laughs> Write the number of genocides you plan to commit next to this. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, if it's more than one, that's okay. A lot of countries have done a, a lot. Of, most countries really are at, on yeah. the three to five there's point. This, there's that instinct to put a zero, but it's like yeah. we're more concerned with you being honest at this yeah, it's, point. Yeah, it's like if you put nothing on your customs declaration coming into the U.S. Like you can right. get away with a lot of shit if you're like, yeah, I bought some stuff. Like <laughs> oh, I came through customs once and he asked if I brought any illegal drugs and I answered with, I don't remember, which is not the right answer. It turns out. <laughs> oh, dang. Uh, but I was just being honest. Because <laughs> uh, I hadn't slept in a very long time. Because of the illegal drugs you took out with you. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of illegal drugs, you know what time it is, You know Robert? who else sells illegal drugs, Dave? <laughs> oh, no. All sorts of people, I imagine. Namely, the products and services that support this podcast. Mmm. Delicious. Well... Here's hardcore drug use. Mm. Uh we're back and we Good are ads. we we just smuggled some shit into the country, then some shit out of the country, then we kind of we kind of squ square danced with the country a little bit. Um yeah. it's been it's been good good times. So <laughs> Prince Lazarus decides Tonga sent their military in to take the last libertarian island nation that we tried to establish. I don't want that to happen to me. So I'm going to get UN membership. Then I can't be invaded. Um, famously a thing that happens when you're in the UN. Right. You don't, you don't get invaded. Um, but that, that's what he decides to do. And he, he starts trying to raise money from libertarians saying, I need $100 million before the UN will accept me as a country. That is mm. not how it works. Yeah, I was going to say, do they, do, you, do they take bribes? Is that the yes, idea? The, just like anybody with a hundred million bucks, you get to be fucking oh every God. billionaire would have a country if that Absolutely. was the way it worked. Like it would be nothing to them. Elon Musk would have like 30 each based off of meme coins. He I would do be, love He the... would be issuing passports. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I love the idea that the UN takes bribes. That would be <laughs> it's just amazing. like a hundred million bucks. <laughs> Not even just like if, if it's just the right clerk, you slip him a hundred dollars. He's like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll let yeah, you, you guys are in a country. country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a shady UN guy in a fucking uh, a trench coat in the alleys mm-hmm. of New York. Hey, you want to start a country? <laughs> Could make it real well, easy yes. for you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a good grift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, so he 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 announces this. He starts raising money, and the UN sends a response, being like, "We'll consider your membership when there's evidence that there's literally anything there." Um, this pisses off Prince Lazarus, and he lashes out, telling a reporter that he didn't want to be in the UN anyway. "Quote: oh, They're trying no. to implement worldwide banking rules and regulations that are not in keeping with the philosophy of New Utopia. Plus, they have a refugee policy for all their members. As a new little country, I." cannot afford boatloads of people from Central America or Cuba or Haiti coming to my shores because I have no welfare system and I have no plans to have a welfare system. You also don't have shores. Yeah. (laughs) You don't have a lot of things, buddy. There's there's actually nothing that you have. It really seems like you're just Mm -hmm. a guy who's who's calling himself a country and running around and and, and just like sort of ranting. Refugees, absolutely not. Yeah. We're going to put up my credenza. Yeah. It kind of seems like we need to call like your family and see if they could come get you. (laughs) It would be funny if the, if the UN had accepted him, but then just started sending refugees to his house. (laughs) Look, man, until you get ashore, you got to put these people somewhere. Uh, He's just got boxes of currency (laughs) and refugees. Oh, amazing. Lazarus had another plan to make his city profitable. Unrestricted medical testing on humans. His sure. HGH business had gotten eaten away when Big Pharma hopped on the HGH train, and so Lazarus next got interested in anti-aging medication. When he was interviewed in 1997, he told the reporter that he had secret knowledge of upcoming anti-aging developments. Quote, There are things on the horizon that people today can only dream about. We are not that far from being able to live multiples of what we look at now as the human lifespan. His name is Lazarus. His name is like, Lazarus. Oh my goodness. And it's the same Peter Thiel is also really into immortality. It's a bunch of like rich white dudes who are scared of death and even more scared that someone at any point might tell them what to do or just that they might not be able to act with complete impunity and never consider other people or society. Like right. that's the thing that's most offensive to them. I I think part of the the money disease is that like for example, if you were to say, hey, what if I sold books online and you happen to be the first person to do that, you think that every idea you have from then on is amazing. Yep. When the reality is just that you did a thing first and it was easy for you because you were in the right place for it. And ideas and like expansion seems easy in their minds. And so it feels like it's a lot of people who want to cut corners. Uh who got successful once and assume it's always going to be like that. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure the, the cave person who invented fire for the first time, like got a lot of clout for a little while and then tried some other experiment that ended with them, like catching their dick on fire and dying. Also, Um, I'm guessing people at the time were like, you didn't invent fire. Like the lightning hit that tree over there and you grabbed the fire. Like you, you know, you just were the first, you're the damn first. Yeah. it would be funny, this, the, the sight of a caveman with like a burning branch with a wildfire in the background being like, look, <laughs> if you guys, if you guys all invest, I can make this like this. You, there's no end to how big this thing could get. Oh, yeah. This fire could really spread. <laughs> this fire could really spread. <laughs> all the kids Getting love on the ground uncontrolled floor. wildfire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They kind of do. They kind of do. So, um, yeah, he, uh, he claimed that basically, so the claim he starts making is that there's a bunch of miracle anti-aging drugs that are totally ready for people to take and can cure death, but the damn FDA won't let him get approved. Um, right. Mm. And so new utopia, what'll make it profitable is once they get this Island built, you can sell these unapproved drugs to anybody. Um, <laughs> and that'll, that'll, that, so he's like, that's why I think rich people will invest because they want my anti-aging drugs. Right. <laughs> God, it just um, keeps getting better and better. Yeah, it's it's very funny. Yeah. Um, next, from The Independent, quote, 
Later this year, if everything goes to plan, a construction company will begin pouring piles at 30-foot intervals into these virgin reefs. Then precast concrete platforms will be placed on top of them. And on top of these, a city will be erected. Plans for the initial stage of development include 1,200 apartments, a 350,000-square-foot shopping mall, five hotels, a bank, a 150,000-square-foot medical center, a casino, a convention center, and a university offering scholarships to students from every country in the world. There will be no taxes in New Utopia, with the single exception of an import duty tax on consumable goods, nor will there be any kind of welfare system. A constitutional sovereignty, the country will be run by a board of governors appointed by the prince himself. Currently, these governors are scattered all over the world, awaiting the time when they can formally take up their posts. All of them, the prince told me, are experts in their chosen fields. Oh my really goodness. wish we knew who those guys were. Oh God, yeah. Imagine going out into the world with a degree from mm-hmm. New Utopia Community College. <laughs> <laughs> and being like, no, it's a real thing. Trust me. My guess, and it, 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 I, I, I would, I would wager to bet that of the governors who are experts in their field, he hired to run his his country. Not one of them knew how to do things with sewage. Absolutely. Like, not. I, I'm, yeah. I'm just certain there was no one. There were no thoughts given. Like, well, what about all the poop? <laughs> yes, I, I really get in like that that vibe that they would build the city and then they'd be like, wait. What do we put under this? Like they, they, they would not have started there. Yeah. At all. I, 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 my guess is that they would have just shat straight into the ocean and like mm-hmm. killed all of the sea around it and formed like this disease filled poop bog that the oh, libertarians. Yeah. yeah. I think that, well, that's, that's my what guess. the ocean It's right there. I get it. Is I right get there. it. I you get just it. walk into the ocean, do your business and walk mm-hmm. out. That it would be the benefit of living at sea. It's self-cleaning. Yep. So the first phase of construction is uh, was scheduled to be completed uh, by the start of September um, and uh, of September 1999. And on December, the country's first birthday celebrations were going to be held. Um, it would start with the, cla- the crowning of Prince Lazarus. Uh, then he would <laughs> bestow titles on those who had helped create the new nation. Oh. Uh, there would be celebrity guests and an inaugural speedboat Grand Prix. Um, so they had a lot of they had a lot of ambitions. Um, oh my goodness, they yeah. sure did. Yeah, they they really did. Um, but of course, New Utopia never got off the ground. The Securities and Exchange Commission eventually declared it a fraudulent nationwide internet scheme. And mm-hmm. this is like 97, so this is a, a really groundbreaking fraudulent on, uh, internet scheme. Like, yeah. Not a lot of precursors at that point, really. <laughs> I love that it's like we have downgraded your new yeah. utopia to internet scheme. Yeah, to fraudulent like, internet scheme. The stark difference between what he's selling and what it actually is is pretty yeah. amazing. It's extremely funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, the SEC ruled that there was like no evidence he'd even tried to figure out how to construct the project. Like, I don't even think Lazarus Long ever wanted to make this. He just wanted to get a bunch of money. Um, now... The fact that the SEC, like, if he was real, the fact that the SEC had declared it a fraud should not have stopped him if he was really motivated to make this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And in fact, he had told a reporter in 1997 that there is nothing, no law that can stop me. If for some reason it's slowed down or postponed, I'll still make it happen. It's something that needs to happen. Lazarus Long died in 2012 at age 88, unable to obtain the immortality drugs he desperately needed because he'd never gotten his country built, Dave. That's a shame, man. It's a real tragedy. Imagine yeah, the frustration. Yeah, if only got that country going. Yeah, that's probably his last thought. Yeah, if, if only, only I'd, I'd gotten got the utopia country. started. Maybe yeah. that's what was going through his daughter, Elizabeth Henderson's head, when in 2017, she announced that she was restarting New Utopia, oh. and that the project would have a completed floating city by 2021. That's heartbreaking. Now, Dave, as we record this, we've still got about six, seven weeks left in 2021, so she could pull it out. She could pull she this could. out. She could Honestly, make it happen. I have more sympathy for her, uh, and you know if I can help in any way, I can. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll help with this floating city. It's fine. Yeah, she she probably had a lot to deal with. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking like you're raised in that environment, and then you you yeah. probably love your your father, and Most you want to honor them, and it's like I'm getting into the family business. Yeah. Um. Or it's I'm getting into the family business of committing stealing money online. from libertarians yeah. Yeah. which is probably what it actually is but i like i like to hope she's a true believer and is yes. like i'm gonna make this floating city god damn it yeah um so yeah 1997 is when the new utopia project like 
both started and blew up. Um, it was also the year that the first boat born libertarian sea nation concept really got started. So you had these guys trying to make platforms and islands and stuff in the middle of the ocean. Now we're going to have some libertarians. They're like, what if a boat was a country? Um, They're just like, guys, we've had boats this whole time. Yeah. What, why <laughs> boats we already do exist. That? Let's make what a country. Yeah. The freedom ship was the dream of an engineer named Norman Nixon. In the early 1990s, right around the same time as Lazarus found his shoals, Norman had Norman had the brilliant and totally original idea to create a, com- a planned community on an island outside of the U.S. Unfortunately, wars kept breaking out around the islands that he wanted to choose, so he was unable to pick any of them. Norman decided then to build his own damn island. He brought on specialists to help him sell this idea, including a marketing director who asked him, if we're going to build an island and we're going to put some houses on it, then why not make it move? <laughs> oh my goodness i just you know you're talking about reinventing the government just like working back from island to boat <laughs> yeah i also love okay i gotta create a government i need a marketing director yeah, like really a, got- <laughs> top of the list top of the list <laughs> yeah and yeah this is just cruise ships mm-hmm. which are which are terrible are terrible horrible for places the for horrible people yeah yeah uh and it's like just go on a cruise just 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 become like a waiter on a cruise line yeah. and you'll be yeah. fine yeah as this will end i think the visions a lot of these people put forward of life in their sea utopias i would prefer to be a waiter on a cruise ship knowing full well that's about the worst job on planet earth oh yeah um, so Norman decided his new his new nation would live aboard a ship, um, but not just any ship. He announced through the same kind of libertarian magazines and online spaces as, as the other people did. He announced that he was going to build the largest boat in human history. It was going to be 4,300 feet long and 25 stories high, six times larger than any ship ever built. Norman uh, put the price tag for this project at a lean six billion dollars, which feels mm. like a bargain. Yeah, I guess if he got it, if he got mm-hmm. that six billion, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, why not? So the idea was brilliantly unhinged. Norman said the <laughs> ship would never dock; it would never get close to the. To, it would never get closer than twelve miles away from the shore, so it would always be within international waters, never crossing inside the legal boundaries of any nation. People mm-hmm. would only be able to reach it by boat shuttles or airplanes. It was going to have an airport on it, also. Um, yeah. Yeah, just the biggest, a mile long boat. I mean, Condos how else aboard. is he going to escape with all that money when it <laughs> yeah, all goes gonna crashing all down? You're going to yeah. have the biggest boat ever. Yeah. Um, condos aboard would start at $425,000 with a $1,000 monthly maintenance fee because in this libertarian utopia you're not allowed to fix your own home Norman Ugh. estimated 24,000 units would be on the ship and he was sur- sure that once he'd sold that many he'd have enough cash to actually build it and and by right. the way again it's worth noting he's not just talking about building a boat he's talking about like the most significant construction project in human history like an order yeah. of magnitude more complicated than the tallest building ever made. Right. He's um, talking about the most amazing thing. Yeah. In, yeah. In a mile long ship that can created. grow its own food. And yeah. Like, all it needs is the money first. Yeah. It's just a money yeah. problem. Good deal. Good deal. So Wired actually interviewed Norman over this. And best of all, they brought in experts to analyze how realistic his claims were. Quote, I don't imagine that people would buy this and would live on this thing for the rest of their lives. They would see it as a sort of vacation home. I could see a lot of criminals buying condos, said Gene Feldman, an, ocean- an oceanographer with the NASA Goddard Space-, Space Flight Center. Based on his own experiences living on ships in small islands, Feldman said, It's very different living in an environment where you have very definite boundaries. You can see the extent of your world, and that does something to your brain after a while. You lose your sense of time and space. Oh, no. He's just like, I don't think they're thinking about what it would be like to live forever on a boat that never gets closer than 12 miles to shore. <laughs> they're creating their own prison. Yeah, like, you're the making thing. a floating prison for everybody. <laughs> Going back to Waterworld, that's not a cheery look at the future. No. Like, us all living in the ocean would be exhausting. Yeah, there's a lot that you have to... People aren't supposed to be in the ocean, as you so astutely noted, Dave. So it you have to adapt a lot to it. Yeah, it literally pushes us out of it every mm-hmm. time we try to go in. It doesn't want us. We it, we can't drink it. It's filled with monsters. Mm-hmm. Leave it alone. Leave Just it be. leave it alone. Leave it alone. Toss some car batteries into it and get on yeah. with your day. <laughs> Give it a car battery or two mm-hmm. for uh, the eels. Uh, yeah, for yeah. the eels. Yeah, exactly. Or the dolphins. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever they want to do with it. It's their car battery now. You know. Yeah. Like, Once it hits the ocean, they own it. 
Um, yeah. Which, if that, if we actually made that law, they might have enough nukes to stop us from destroying mm-hmm. their environment. Um, so <laughs> they just need it, thumbs. That's the one yeah. thing they need. I think they could figure it out. They're smart. Mm-hmm. Um, in media, sort of like. Uh, blasts and whatnot, Norman and his agents bragged that their floating island would be a huge tourist draw, with more than 10,000 hotel rooms available, casinos, printing companies, furniture outlets, department stores, all tax-free. They were particularly bullish about the promise of taking an American-style mall around the world, so foreigners could shop just like us, but on a boat. Did he a say... selling point. Did, he, did you say printing companies? Yeah. Where it's like there's casinos and restaurants. Also, you can make copies of stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a game house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. no government interference with you yeah. doing your... You can your, print anything you want. Yeah, printing your zines. Even tasteful nudes of... Well, then we get into the age of consent <laughs> stuff again. Um, so as it happens, the Liberty Ship organizers plan to go ju- just go ahead and use U.S. dollars as their currency. Um, this was justified That's because fair. it was easier. <laughs> like yeah, everybody values it. dollars. We'll just use those. <laughs> I get it. Like money, money, do that later. Do that. Yeah. We, we've I don't want to live seen. under the tyranny of a nation, but like, I mean, you know, dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. To, again, you keep inventing your own money. It's just. It's yeah. Tough. It's it is it's a whole thing. If you're convinced that people need money, you might as well just use money that already exists. Mm-hmm. Um, although now we have crypto, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Oh, so, good. Even though the ship planned to stay in international waters, the Liberty was going to fly the flag of a nation. This is a requirement for international maritime law. Uh, Norman cl- Norman claimed that Ireland had agreed to let them register there, and that the <laughs> ship was going to fly an Irish flag, which would mean that the people on board the Liberty would be bound by Irish law which did not at that point i think allow abortion among other things oh man also you said claimed that uh yeah, oh yeah allowed. he said that they'd worked out a deal <laughs> you know I, I i feel like i know where that's going yeah so he's saying we're gonna fly under an irish flag and everyone will be accountable to irish law but then there's all sorts of principled libertarian jargon in the promo materials like quote there will be no intrusion into or involvement with personal business finances or commercial transactions which i don't know ireland might have something to say about i was gonna Um, say ireland's like uh yeah there will be (laughs) norman bragged that only food sanitation would be regulated which beyond making him fda cucked is still at odds with irish law and with libertarian practice too why just why just food sanitation can people not take care of that themselves norman right (laughs) this this feels like if i set up like a cardboard stand outside that sold crystal meth and called it Starbucks, you know? And it's just like, this is another Starbucks folks. Starbucks approved. Here's your crystal meth. Like that's, that's what they're creating here. Yeah, and he's 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 trying to get it, people to believe that, like, well, we'll fly fly under an Irish flag, but flag, but whatever crimes you want to do when you're living here, they're not going to have any problem with. You right. can run your cocaine empire from our floating boat, and you're good to go. It's a real like, don't worry, my roommate's totally cool moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. So. Wired did their due diligence, and they reached out to experts in boat stuff to put some of the claims by the Liberty people to the test, and here's one example. David Hall of the Center for Marine Conservation said dealing with massive amounts of solid wastes generated on board is just one of many concerns. There are all sorts of questions that they'll have to deal with, such as what hazard, if any, would it pose to marine animals? Whales are hit by ships all the time, he said. It sounds as if a whale collided with this thing. I don't think it would have much of a chance. (laughs) Still, the plan and the fundraising went on. In 2000, after three years of feverish propagandizing, the Freedom Ship had evolved beyond just a project of Norman Nixon, and now it accumulated a sports team's worth of managers and investors speaking for it. Here's how they sold it in an article three years later. The Freedom Ship's creators say the vessel, whose construction is due to start in Honduras this summer, will be one of the wonders of the world. The company behind the scheme said reservations for the 20,000 homes on board have begun to accelerate, and there were already plans for two other floating cities. Freedom Ship will be nearly a mile long, 725 feet wide and 340 feet tall, and will have room for 40,000 people, including a staff of 10,000. There will be a school and a university on board, not to mention a landing strip, a hospital, a shopping mall, a casino, and 200 acres of open space. 
space. Roger Gooch, the ship's marketing vice Ooh. president, claims to have 15% of the units reserved. Later in that article, which opens with the author noting that creators say the ship will be a new wonder of the world, construction was claimed to be starting in 60 to 90 days. Um, so, yeah, by this point, tourism is no longer the draw. They're not claiming people are going to, like, show up here. Gooch uh, claims that the boat company, the people making this, are just a giant landlord. And that's all they want to do is provide entrepreneurs with spaces to do their businesses. But they also want to set up a university um, where it's bragged. Like, they, they, they want to set up a university for the kids there to go to, but also so that drug companies can do unregulated tests on people. Sure. They, and they love this casino thing. They, they really want, want casinos. And I get it because it's basically, they want to, they're just trying to create a town, but then just like a shady town. That's it. It's a town yeah, to do it's shady It's just a stuff. town for just crimes and one school. Yeah. Where they'll That's shoot it. you up with unregulated drugs. Right. Like if it weren't for the shady stuff, mm. just create a town. Yeah. You know, like, that's it. That's all you're making. You can do that anywhere. Yeah. Uh, well, not anywhere, but uh, yeah, it's it's purely, uh, I think that's why it's always sketchy, right? Because yeah. it always comes down to, we want to do really shady stuff. Yeah. And we're going to make it seem like uh, we're just, you know, we're fucking off into the ocean. We're doing our own little utopia where you can do anything. We're like, that's always like the anything. underlining part. Yeah. <sighs> so... Here's the thing, Dave. Okay. Y- you, you know libertarians, right? E- like, personally? I mean, how do you think, as a general rule, how do you think libertarians feel about the FBI? Oh, God. I'm, I'm sure they, like, I'm sure they re- really respect them. <laughs> uh, and, well, you know, they understand, you know, it's a job, you know? You, you gotta do what you gotta do. And they're very respectful to them if they, like, talk to them. Well, or any it, authority... <laughs> Dave, it's funny because you're 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 going you're doing this because normally when libertarians and the FBI intersect, it's a gunfight. Um, right. <laughs> this it's very funny because they hire an FBI agent to to keep track of law and order on their floating ship. Oh wow, <laughs> wow, yeah. So they're just doing they're again, just doing in America, but with why, like you can you can sell drugs, I guess. <laughs> right. They're just doing the Pirate Bay. Like mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. Is it's just. No, the Pirate Bay would have been way cooler, Dave. Oh, absolutely. It's just, but all these things are, is just like, hey, get in on this before we're shut down. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's it. And if they were honest, I don't know if I'd respect them more because, you know, some of the things they want to do is horrifying. Yeah. But, like, if it was like, look, we just want to go gamble on stuff and, like, do a bunch of drugs. So we're creating this quote unquote country. Mm-hmm. Uh, and w- we don't really believe in anything, but just I might being... be a citizen if it was exactly if that was the if that was the, what's going on. But no, yeah, these... they're <laughs> like, look, we're just being Vegas in the ocean. Yeah, uh, and we're you know you can't kill people there. You can't do like you can't do a lot of fucked up stuff. We just want a little more freedom. Just yeah, a little. We want to be able to be like like do a little do some stuff that's crimes elsewhere, but we don't want uh, people to be murdering each other. This is yeah. not an ideological thing. We just think it would be neat if we could sell crack cocaine and operate a casino. I would be like, "Great." Exactly. Let me, I like, will go to your casino and smoke yeah. your crack. If it's like, um, look, if someone murders someone that's not cool, but if you yeah, if you like do a bunch of PCP and fall into our engine, yeah. I mean that's that it, it is what it is. Like yeah. that's what you're here to do. And and it's it's frustrating to me like these guys that's kind of how they want to f- like they, they they say they talk a good game about like liberty like no intrusions on personal liberties all that stuff and then they hire like so the, in in this <laughs> article from FBI. like three years later Mr Gooch tells the interviewer that they've hired a former FBI man to head a two thousand person security force with state of the art defensive weapons oh um, no. Yeah, uh, and different. He, he talks about how like oh, different. Every deck and floor will have their own elected representatives, but also the captain's word will be finer, final. So it's like, so you want to have an ocean <laughs> dictatorship run by the FBI with guns, right. and or no one else like, gets guns, and you're calling yourself a libertarian? Right? They're like, look, every deck has its own like representative, and then there's like a president of the mm-hmm. boat. Yeah, like that's you're, of the you're boat. just. It's just doing government. It's and always it's, just doing yeah, government. And, and, yeah, and, and we have an unaccountable armed wing of the state that can do violence to you with no recourse. And yeah, right. it's, it's it, see, we're freedom. <laughs> We've you developed freedom. 
this all reminds me a little bit this is weird of disney world because disney world is like when it was established they did a lot of stuff with florida where they were like look just stay out of here we'll have our own emts and stuff Mm -hmm. and like fire like that's essentially what they're trying to do but like florida obviously still or disney still exists in the country Mm -hmm. but it feels very much like like walt disney's dream of epcot and stuff where he was like i want this to be its own nation uh but you know disney has rides so i guess what i'm saying is have some fucking rides on your country and i think it'll work out like if they have a like a like a log flume i'd be like this is great that's great good for them Mm -hmm. but instead they just want to yeah I don't know what they want. I guess they just want to uh, do a bunch of illegal shit. Yep. Yeah. And and which is fine too. I guess I don't have know. their own FBI to uh, have their own FBI. Yeah, it's cool. You know what else is cool, Dave? Oh no. Your what? pluggables. My pluggables. Your pluggables are cool. Are as we hell, done, Roham? Is the episode over? Yeah. This part one is over. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, listen. Hey, hi. Um, I, I'm on Twitter at Movie Hooligan. Um, I run a podcast network with Tom Ryman uh, called Gamefully Unemployed. You can find that wherever you find podcasts. We have we 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 do stuff about movies and such. Uh, we have a Patreon, patreoncom slash unemployed. Uh, there's a bunch of exclusive podcasts on that. Uh, I'm also a I'm head writer for some more news. You sure so check that out as well. That's all my stuff. Well, um, I'm no one and you can find me nowhere. Goodbye forever. <laughs>